lovely people. Welcome to BTM Africa. My name is NYDJ. On today's edition, or should I say today's episode of BTM Africa, I bring you one of the renowned rappers growing out of Kumasi. Somebody might say he's not in Kumasi anymore, but he still holds on to his route and comes home anytime he has the opportunity. He's a rapper doing so well. You might have heard of the name Kofi Jamal. But you ask yourself, how and when did he get to the place he is today? Kofi Jamal is my guest on BTM Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Let's go for this quick one. We shall be right back. All right, guys. So Kofi Jamal is seated with me right here. Kofi, okay. uh, so, uh, see, distance. Then, 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 you know, I'm sure as I do, you can the distance where I can't move. Okay. 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 things uh, anyway. Okay. But thank you for joining me on BTM it's a, Africa. It's a pleasure. Today. It's a pleasure. And then as a while, who is a good boy, a good boy, a good boy, be all of a sudden. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm a humble soul, you know. Hey. I know you could, uh, uh, those that I grew up from Bantama, mm -hmm. where we are, we are known for being notorious and all that. Yeah, I had. Yeah, but like, I, I have that humble like thing in me, so mm. yeah. It's a bit harsh on the cover, okay. Oh, okay. That's how it is, yeah. So it's more like okay, outside he looks like a oh, yeah, yeah, hard guy, yeah. but deep within he's a yeah, very humble yeah, guy. Yeah. Interesting. Kofi Jama, I'm pretty sure say a lot of people eh, because oh yeah, the guy who did Medea, the guy yeah. who recently released the, an EP and all yeah. that. That's how they know you. But we want to get to know Kofi Jama. Kofi Jama, or you why? When they know fast start I mean, Kumasi the minimum years your your new rappers not getting a more time. Yeah. Yeah. Seen it. How did Kofi Jama start? Well, it started. As a, a dream, mm. a dream I, I envisioned say, from the start. Now, me saying you know, like I, I had a vision of um, doing music and doing a baker. So I was inspired by the, my my immediate surroundings. I grew up in Bantama, and mm. that's where the, that was that was where the hottest jams in Kumasi happened. Exactly, street jam. So, street jams for real. So I, I used to be like in front watching uh, like people like. Comfort Kwade, Lo Kenya, and all Okchano Kwame brothers, and all those, all those kings, and it really inspired me. From that moment, I wanted to really do music, mm. but I hadn't put the ink to the paper yet. From since from that time, but I always sing along and all those stuff. So it started from there. So I was from that time. I was all that I had. The influences was like piling up to be something. Mm. So it really got serious when I got to. Uh, I finished, I completed JHS. Which year are we looking at? Whoa. I think 2009 somewhere. Okay. Yeah, so that's when I started really trying to write my own things and all that stuff. Mm. So doing SS, I went to um, Solid FM. Okay. Yeah, I finished that Saturday. Yeah. And I emerged as a winner. That was around 2013. And I emerged as a winner of their 2000 program. So it's, it's just, it just took off from there. Mm. At that moment, no, I mean, we, we live in an area where Parents never want their kids to get into music. True. I mean, they wanted to go to school, become a successful yeah. lawyer, become a doctor, or even manage their own business. Oh, yeah. But then you decided to follow rap or music. music yeah. Go to competitions, emerge as a winner with a solid FM freestyle yeah. uh, Saturday Today. and all that. Women freestyle Saturday, you know, how did your parents feel about it? Were they ready to allow you to continue with music? Well, and they're crying in the first place, no money Jones are here. Well, initially, freestyle Saturday, you no. Know, um, with like me winning, no, there was announced uh, on radio said like there's a price on it, mm. so it was like not knowing, like, no, no, like to the lane to, to us, we knew that like it had to be invested in you recording and all okay. those stuff, like promotion, yeah, yeah, and all those stuff. But they thought, say, I had that money on me, uh, so they were uh, during that time, they were asking, like, I want a freestyle up and I should be getting money. Because they mentioned a certain price on radio. Okay. So, so that, the parents were rather thinking that because they were winning, you should be making yeah, some yeah, money. money. So that's when, around that time, I was still coming up with no money. That was when I wanted to record. So mm -hmm. Freestyle Saturday gave me a chance to record with like papi. Okay. And all this stuff. So they, they, they wondered why I, ha like I had no money. At that time, they, they were hyping me on radio and all those stuff. Mm -hmm. So around that time, they were a bit laid back. On me pursuing music, they weren't all like all we did because they mm -hmm. thought there wasn't enough in it. Yeah. For me, so. Because it was more like you just hustling and putting everything in it, but not making anything back. Yeah, for real. So during that time, they were they were 
like pressuring me to go to university and all that stuff. But I, I, I th that was when I got it. Like I wanted to nurture my talent. Mm. That was when, I, like, I felt I had a chance. The school was behind me now, and I had a chance to really go in hard on it. Mm. So they wanted me to go to school, and I wanted to stay home and still pursue the music career further. So we had a lot of to and fro with them on that stuff. Did and you have to run away from home? That's I, my boy. They were near. I was, I was, I was never home since I completed SS. I was always in the studio. Mm. Yeah, and it, it, it got to a certain time that I wasn't even sleeping home again. But we were in the same hood in Bantama. They would see me around, but I wouldn't come to sleep home. So your parents could see you around. And they like, ah, coffee, nine two, Murphy. Yeah, that was something like that. <laughs> so I had, I had, and I, I couldn't even go to them for money and all those stuff. So during that time, I had to hustle. I had to do a side hustle mm. and and try to pursue the music too. What side hustling were you doing? Well, but my boy is the music there, right? <laughs> well, I applied to be a security. Whoa. Whoa. So I was a security a man at Golden Tulip and Golden Bean. Interesting. Yeah. So that was when, and people would see me, those that knew I won the Freestyle Saturday and all that stuff, they would see me and go like, whoa, is this is this, this guy? Some would be laughing at me and all that stuff. But, you know, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't get me down. Yeah, I had to rise up and all that stuff. And I got a lot of motivation to write during that time. Whoa. Yeah. During those times when you were working as a security, uh, security officer guard and, in, those, in yeah, those institutions. Yeah. I really, I really, I really had a, um, it hit me like an epiphany mm. that this is really serious. So it's I have a to boy come crashing. <laughs> so that was when, I, like, that was the wake up call for me that this is really serious. So I have mm. to get down with it. Mm. Yeah. And you move beyond that. Parents were not ready for you for yeah. for the music, but you had to actually move on yeah. and do it. And then with all the hassle. You moved in from Kumasi. Yeah. What made you move from Kumasi? Is it because the music wasn't paying off, and I felt that all the efforts we were putting in were still not yielding the results? Well, the Kumasi like the Accra opportunity came by as a result of me meeting one guy that's called Jerry. Okay. He managed that girl at that time. Okay. You know, so he was she was an internet sensation around that time. Yeah. So he used to come to our studio and we do some mashups and all those stuff. So I featured that girl on a song of mine and like uh, that opportunity for this whole guard one record label signing mm. it was connected through Jerry okay yeah so they heard me on that song mm. and they asked for me so that's how come Jerry uh, came here and like escorted me to Accra, to Accra. Yeah. Wait, were you ready for that I mean doing it in Kumasi I, I really want to look at the journey even before you yeah. move to Accra yeah. As at the time, you had to go do uh, work as a security guard, make money and write. Mm -hmm. Did you record songs? Did you put out songs? Yeah, I, recorded, yeah, I recorded songs. And around that time, there was a song, Akashina Baba. It was just a mistake. Mm. And it, it was no, no radio promos and all that, but it was really big in the, the streets. So uh, people would see me as a star and something like that, but they, they would come and see me also doing a security, security guard, guard at the gate. So it was, it was, it was a whole lot. It was a whole lot for me, and like I was, as I said, I was really determined to do it. Mm. So I was writing a whole lot of songs around the time, and I, I came up with Roll On. Mm -hmm. I wrote Roll On around that time. Okay. Yeah. And so that was when you were in Kumasi. Still? Yeah, I was in Kumasi, and I really wrote a lot of motivation songs because I was that was how, how I was feeling around that time. Mm. Uh, yeah. So it means that your situation is inspired some of the songs you did. For real. Now you had to move into a crowd. Were you ready for it? Were you prepared for it? Well, I wasn't ready. Like, because it came out of the, like, I wasn't expecting that I would get a call that there's a label that wanted me on. Mm. So, it was overwhelming for me. When I got there, I was just like a new, like a new car out of, like a fish out of an ocean, something mm. like that. So, then by, I met my label and they were so good to me and all that stuff. So, that helped me calm down a little bit. Because I knew no one around at that time when I got there. Mm. But they are, they've been family since, so they made that journey in a cross mode for me. And that's got one record. Yeah, got one record. Ever since signing to the label, would you say life has been better for you as an artist? Much, much better. Much, mm. much better. Because the things that I, because back in Kumasi, after recording the song, I had to 
go rush people to promote my song mm. on the streets and even DJs I could, I could uh, like I knew scientific and all the, yeah. them so I used to rush them back on YFM so that they could get my song on and all that stuff mm. but since signing on to Guy One label like I have that opportunity to create without not like without thinking about where the song is gonna go mm. and all those stuff because they, they they've played some uh, setups that really go get the song going after I'm done with it so, so there seems to be the structures yeah so the structures you as an artist as record giving my soul in the song putting my heart in it and that's it has that influenced your writing now because I mean at a point you were in a certain state of mind where yeah. you had to hustle now you feel comfortable has that influenced your writing well it, it gave me I think it gave me a lot of more confidence mm. it made like it, it validated where I like I, I was at that time mm. and um, uh, I, what I could say, like sometimes I reflect back on the moments that I had in Kumase, mm -hmm. my hustling days to write a hustle song, mm -hmm. something like that. And if there is a like, if it's a luxury song, I have that um, experience mindset to, well. yeah, to write something about it. So it's, it's been like it's been like a timeline, so I can dig in every timeline to get some songs out. So. Mm. It's been great so far. One of the songs you recorded that I think took everybody by surprise was a song that featured Caligraf Jones mm. and then he had Ice Prince, Ice Prince Amani it. as well. Did you know about it? Or it was a managerial decision and then they hit you and like, Kofi, this is what we have. Well, it, it, that, was, that was something else. I, I see it's not a sort of a, a, a divine connection because mm. um, Jay sent that's tennis producer. Yeah. Yeah, he sent me that hip hop beat and he wanted me to lay some hook on it because he heard me on some songs and he felt that he wanted me to give me something to do. Mm -hmm. So we did with the money like my my people like got him to me and I recorded that hook. So I sent it back to him. The next day he called me telling me that Ice Prince heard it and he wanted to it's drop right. some verse on it. Wow. And I was I couldn't like I couldn't just put it all together. Did that look like okay? That's my first big project. Like I mean, having an I international on, yeah, artist yeah. on it. it. It really blew my mind off because mm. I just did the hook. So you didn't know who was going to be who on was going to be on it. I was just showing myself, proving myself to like uh, Jay sent yeah. yeah, and he sent him on it. And the next day he called like, uh, he called me telling me that Ice Prince linked up Calligraph Jones on it because he felt the song was wow. good and he wanted him to be on it. So it wasn't even your intent to have to Ice have, Prince and, yeah, and Calligraph Jones, Jones on the song, it. no. But then they both felt it and wanted to be on it. That's it, that's how it happened. Now he had to fly them in to shoot the video. Was it like, okay, this is the moment. So far as we have both of them on, even if we have to empty our bank accounts, we need to do that. To so that's the bad one because they made it happen. They really made it happen. They really worked their ass off to get that uh, video shoot done. Because mm. it was just immediately after the lock, like before the before lockdown. The lockdown. Yeah, and we had to do things in a rush a little bit, but it, it went, it went really cool. Well, you guys didn't record in the studio together, so obviously you might not have had that kind of kind of connection. Yeah. But with the video shoot, how was it when? All the three of you had to be at one point to shoot. Well, it was something else. It was me, like, because as I started this music career, I wanted features. Mm. I dreamt of features, but it wasn't at that point. Because mm. I'm here in Ghana, so I would only dreamt of the Ghanaian features that I could get. Okay. But all of a sudden, I'm, like, popping off in Africa and all that stuff. It was really something else. And as they came, the vibe was different. The vibe was different. Ice Prince is a real brother. I just connected with him on that spot. Mm. See rappers playing his songs and vibing to songs like songs that he likes, I like. Yeah. So if that we felt that connection from there. And we even recorded some joints back in the apartment that they were. Oh, so great. yeah, we did some joints before we even go on to the video shoot. Interesting. So the vibe was there already in Calligraph, man, crazy vibes. Amazing. Yeah, so we That's had something a good time. I wanted to ask. I mean, but it seems you answered it. I mean, growing up, you wanted to have features. People were asking, okay, so we have Ghanaian rappers. Mm. Why did Kofi Jamal all of a sudden move out of Ghana mm. straight to Nigeria and to, uh, mm. to have Caligraph Jones and then to have Ice Prince? Mm. Why not Ghanaian, uh, Ghanaian rapper? I, I'm sure there are Ghanaian rappers you look up to. Yeah, very true. So very why true. none of them? Well, as we started, like, I, I was pushing for to, like i was pushing to like to get featured yeah, or yeah, to yeah. get yeah to but it was in the works that's how i felt because some people think they will have to they will have to come up before 
they give yeah. you the hype or something like that. So, so more like you're on the same level. Yeah, yeah. So that was what we were encountering. And I, for me personally, I, I don't like a lot of features because I can do anything on my like everything on my own. Mm. But my label was pushing me to like go for features because that's the way. And it really links you to other people and the yeah, fans. And you talk yeah, to other markets yeah, as well. For real, for real. So we were on it. We were still trying to get some people in Ghana here on on the project, mm. stuff like that. But the back and forth, thing, yeah. and they were really ready. Yeah. Ice Prince and Caligraph Jones were just excited about, about that project, mm. and they, they, we, we, we even like didn't have to tell them to drop some verse on it or something but yeah. they did it out of their free will they heard it and they liked it yeah so we had to let it happen how how has that song opened doors for you wow do you have some of the big arts now reaching out to you and all that wow it's, it's so like it, it it gave me a smooth sailing in the industry i can say because mm -hmm. there are many big guys that i don't know if it's because of that song or yeah, because they, heard, they heard about other projects but right now it's like i can get any feature that i want here in ghana Whoa. but yeah but i'm um, it's, it's still a plan and I'm building gradually yeah. so it's, it's, it's been great since after that particular project came your new baby that's Truth EP. Truth EP what informed it because I mean after drawing that dope hip hop tune everybody was thinking okay that's a new direction for Kofi Jamal then he dropped an EP that mm. feature I think the only feature is Sefa Sefa yeah and that's one of the favorite songs on that particular EP oh, yeah, yeah I, I mean I, I listen to the song all the time mm. And I'm like, okay, this is it. Why an EP? Why not an album? Because now you have the attention. Yeah. Why do you want to drop an EP and not an album? Well, I think the EP is sort of a, a preparation. I wanted to start, but I had to have some a starting point, like a mm. genesis of what is to come. Mm. So that's why the truth came out. And the truth is an acronym for uh, transforming rhythms under thousand hours. Oh, okay. And the first transforming rhythms, rhythms under, under thousand, thousand hours. hours. Whoa. And the first track, uh, the first the intro is thousand hours. Yeah. And after that, the ch the, the rhythms are just it, it don't it don't, it don't stick to one genre, one yes. type of beat. Yes. So that that was the idea, and it was to show my diversity and versatility. Mm. Yeah, mm. and to prove myself to people out there that this is me and this is what I can do. Mm. So they should expect more, and they should like expect where I will delve into the genres and where I will go. Yeah. So we can't really classify Kofi Jamal as a rapper. No. You're a musician? Yeah. From the start, I was a rapper, but during those days, I, I had way much more vision than just rapping. Mm. So I was rapping, but I had in mind that I have to like jump on to really make be a full musician that I can make create music on my own mm. without needing somebody to do a hook or chorus for me or something okay. like that. So I consciously worked on that. Mm. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. Was it not because perhaps, I mean, rappers, it was tough for rappers to break through. I mean, every rapper suffers, especially in Ghana. Yeah, very true. Almost all the big rap acts we know in Ghana had to point out to do a zonto or do a song that people could yeah. sing along. Yeah. Is that what informed your decision to be an all-round musician? Yeah, I, want to, I wanted to spread it all out. Because I, I think what, what, what's mainly in me is that I have some, some things to share, some content, some substance to share with the world. Mm -hmm. And it's not everybody that listens to rap. Yeah. So I have to spread it all across. If you if you listen to dance or I can put a message in a dance or rhythm. So you that listens to dance or can really connect with it. Okay. So that was the whole idea. I wanted to spread it all across because the main thing is uh, they, there's a message always in my music. Yeah. And I just don't rap just to rap and rhyme and make fun of it. Okay. But I rap to at the end of the day at the end of the day you get inspired, motivated or you want to get up to do something. Let's get back to the Truth EP. Yeah. The only feature was Sefa. Was yeah. there a particular reason why she was the only featured artist on the, on the album? We were, we were, yeah, we were going for no features. I start, at the start, we were going for no features. But that Tremor song is the last song that I did on the EP. And after I did my verse, I felt that there was something still missing. Mm. Yeah, so my manager came up with the idea that this a girl could really fit on this. So we searched around and I can't, like Sefa was on my mind around that mm -hmm. time. Some some people were doubting like why Sefa and all that stuff, but I felt she complimented me on the track. Okay. And age wise and all wise, like she was the perfect So it's not really like okay, there's something going on between you and Sefa. Nah. Even though she's much attractive but 
there's nothing going on. No, that's not opening way for something. I mean, because I, I heard her speak yesterday on the TV show, and she was also full of praise for you oh. and loves that particular song. Yeah. Did that vibe happen when you guys were recording, or it's been there before since? It happened when we were recording, because. Mm. The, the day in the studio, I had to get in the booth with her when she was recording her verse. Okay. Yeah, and it was something else. It, we had a great experience around that time. And I think we connected through the music. Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's where it, it's so style. Could that be a continuation of that? I would wish for more to happen because I, I, oh, I have an idea. Hold on. Why do you say you wish for more to happen? Music wise. <laughs> 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 you are looking at music I mean. yeah really? yeah for now I'm, I'm looking at music beyond music yeah because I, I went out I, I, like I go to a house and visit her oh, sometimes wow. and it's cool we are forming that bond that relationship but mm. it's, it, it started from the music so that's where you have to keep it so the pivot is the music yeah but the music the, could give back to any other thing else the probability is <laughs> <laughs> the probability is many so <laughs> But I mean, it wouldn't be bad if, if there's a you Not both of you have two heads, two music heads, yeah. and of course, it, it could, like you said, she complimented you on the song, so obviously it could yeah. move beyond. Yeah. I don't want to delve much into that. And we are really planning on like coming out with an EP. Oh, just both of you, yeah. Oh, okay. But we're just thinking of it's just the ideas that came out, so we are looking forward. I wanted to take the words of your out of your mouth. You said we are really planning on. You know, typically when you hear that, I'm thinking, okay, we are really planning on getting married. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be yeah. awesome, though. No, you seem to be very interested in that. Not that. You like her. I like her. She yeah, I can't you. deny that fact. Yeah. She likes you yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. For now, we are keeping it at the brother. Okay, yeah. Make sure she doesn't brother zone you <laughs> or friend zone you. Because <laughs> first, before I realize, you have an interest in somebody's carrying her away. Very true, but I'm I'm not worried about that though. Because the, the music is, it will always get us back together. Mm. And we did, it wouldn't be for anything apart from music. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kofi mm -hmm. Jama. And why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's get back to the EP. I mean, songs on it are different. Yeah. That's, to, that's to show how versatile you are yeah. and all that. How is the EP doing so far? So great. The streams and all is, is, is amazing. And people from all sorts of places are picking up the EP. We got something that people in, Ash in East Africa, like if you check our stats, people in East Africa are really like really vibing to like songs like Make You Mine on the okay. EP. Yeah, that's their kind of feel. So they really vibe that. And it's, it's really spreading across. And people that knew me for just rapping yeah. are now getting to know much more of what mm -hmm. I can do and they are really expecting more. So it's, it's, it's it's something else. The EP has opened a lot of ways for me. So far, would you say your expectations have been met, or you think there is more to be done with the EP? There's more to be done, though, because it just it, it's, it's barely three weeks yeah. since we released the yeah. EP, and it's already already causing mayhem around. So yeah. I think there's more to come. Are we going to see videos from? I mean, short from songs on the EP. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I'm coming out with our DAB soon. Okay. Yeah, our DAB video shoot is done, and we are we are planning to bring it out. Uh, how has COVID-19 actually impacted your, the career? Because at a point when you released the song that features Caligram Jones yeah. and Ice Prince, I mean, maybe you had to move around to do yeah. a bit of promo, but yeah. you couldn't do it. You had to release an EP. Now you're on some tour, which I yeah. think is helping. But did that impact the progress of your, of your career? Well, I wouldn't say, like, in a, in a way, we had shows that we could have uh, played in East Africa. Oh, wow. That was lined up, but because of the COVID, we have to pause. But it's also a good thing because everybody is home and everybody is enjoying the music and all, yeah. all the stuff. And I think it's, it's, it's rearranging the system in a way. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. when, when the nightclubs are open and everywhere is bubbly, we are going to see changes. And people yeah. are, the underdogs are going to get that chance to be on top. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's on a good cause. And I've been an indoor kind of person. Okay. I don't really club and party a lot i'm always indoors trying to find the next idea for my song so right. since that covered i've been indoors making more work interesting yeah. interesting beyond the truth ep what next for kofi jama well i'm moving on to my album yeah that'll that'll come out soon and i don't like it when people tell me soon especially on this show that's <laughs> btm africa how soon is the soon well 
don't be like a politician who is always in the pipeline. The pipeline could be very long. So how soon is that soon? Well, if if um, the COVID is 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 because of the COVID that is making it like like we're stressing on it because of the COVID. But mm -hmm. if it's like the COVID is like no, no there's no more today. Mm -hmm. I can show you that we can release something now. Because okay. yeah, the plan was to release the album and tour with it. Okay. But since the COVID is in, we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we we okay. pause on that a bit. I think I understand you. Yeah. Now. I understand yeah. you now. So we still should be looking forward to an album. Yeah. yeah. We have the album title already. Not yet. We have the number of songs we want to I have. I have now. songs on it, but I'm I'm I have a team, but I haven't like put together a name for it. Okay. But there's a team for the whole songs on the album. And you want to yeah. share that with us? The, it's, it's the diversity and things that you wouldn't expect me to, like songs and kind of songs that you wouldn't expect me to do so even beyond truth ep and all the things we didn't expect you to do there's still more, more. that we didn't expect you to do which are going to be on the album yeah that's why the truth was i said is the genesis is the starting point of what is to come okay so i'm like yeah in the album i'm going much deeper and spreading it all across yeah interesting yeah. you want to do the the lines you did on the one that features Calligraph Jones and yeah. Ice Prince as we wrap up on BTM Africa this, this day. See, I hit him up like come to pack the lights on me, yeah, everywhere. Now it's up, spice it up, let's get saucy, yeah. I'ma get it, I won't lie, and I put it on my life. Got the feeling deep inside, uh, 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 uh. These rollers never get legs, so I hit me out all time with cold, Joe. Grace is working for me, but it doesn't need no salary. No, no. Good foundation, build like a mason. But I won't sell my soul, though. Every time I show off, man, it's a show. Interesting. There is that song, Medea. Yeah. So many people can actually relate. I want you to do a verse on that one as well for me. Okay. If that's possible. Yeah. It goes like this, man. I still the suffer, still I'm tougher. Can't lie about it. To the be a Jimmy Chakota, just to kill the world. It's mama sorry, I'm still away, searching for the glory. Keep on praying for me, cause the devil may be out to get me. Can't stop. Yes, you demon TV, they come cross. I feel way after we they pull up like we can't drop. Wanna get my money up, and I wanna tell my story so you remember me when I'm gone and in the cemetery. To be a legend, the clock keeps ticking. So me dedicate me every minute and my seconds to load up my mind, cause I use I use it as my weapon. Watch me turn my curses into blessings. No need to stress it. Walk through the valley of shadow of death, going hard for the money, passion and power, respect. I mean, they teach Tracy, but you see, I'm smelling of success. And I play my enemies like I'm playing the game with chess. Amazing. Huh. You know, I tell you, I tend to sit back and listen to rap, and I ask how the thought comes in and how they're able to put all these things together. Well, that's your job. I can't do it. My, mine is perhaps to play the music and perhaps speak English. My <laughs> hands is to put all these stuff together and make it sensible so that you are able to vibe with it and relate. And that is the job that you are doing. Yeah, I must thank you very much for actually spending time with us oh, on BTL Africa. It's a pleasure. I mean, it's, it's worth knowing the journey and where you focus on yeah. and where you want to be. Yeah. The EP is out. Obviously, you have an album coming out as well. Yeah. So you want to share with us how people are able to get the EP, how they're able to check you out on social media, follow you and stay connected yeah the ep is out on all the guitar platforms the truth ep on audio mark itunes sound soundcloud um uh half town boom play and all every like the guitar platform, platform yeah okay. you get it like like the truth ep there and if you want to follow me on twitter it's at kofi jamar and the jamar is j-a-m-a-r some people misplace it with l oh, yeah. yeah but j is so on facebook kofi jamar on Twitter, Kofi Jamal, on Instagram, Kofi Jamal. And you can also follow God One Records, for real. Nice one. So you can also follow God One Records, and you can also follow me at NYDJ Live, and then uh, BTM underscore Africa. The Africa is A-F-R-I-K-A. So you can check us out. And of course, I want to thank uh, everybody who has been a part of this. And I'll be photos to Baluchi Graphics and Designs. You want to shoot a music video, you want to have your wedding done, you want to actually have your photo shoot I'll be sharing some of the photos they, they actually took of me recently. Charlie, my wife see the pictures, girl, like she fell in love with me again. <laughs> so if you need them, of course, going to have their numbers scroll beneath. Check them out and contact them so they're able to work things out for you. Guys, thank you very much for actually making this happen. And once again, thank you very much for coming. It's a pleasure. My name is NYDJ. Remember to subscribe, share this, and of course, go check out his music and check out all the good things he's doing. Tell a friend to tell a friend. 
to tell a friend to check him out. My name is NY. Once again, thank you for watching. See you on the next episode.